ktoré je men. Ktoré je men tvrdá. Thank you, professor Khaled. محاضرة updated, highly informative. يعني أنا بحسب حضرتك زي حضرتك قدرت تلم كل المجموعة دي من ال information عن ال medications. وزي ما حضرتك قلت الحقيقة ما زالت كمية المعلومات كبيرة قوي الخاصة بال medications وال drugs and especially في الأطفال. وزي ما حضرتك قلت في الآخر في كل لي ال clinical trials لي ال medication في الأطفال. طبعا انا مش عايز اقول لحضرتك كميه الاسئله اللي جايه حوالين هذا الموضوع بس ان شاء الله باذن الله احنا بناجل الاسئله لنهايه التوك وبشكر حضرتك جدا جدا محاضره رائعه از يوجوال استاذ الدكتور خالد. Now it gives me a great honor and pleasure actually to present our international speaker Dr. Marty Bones Ogina, BQ consultant pediatric home ventilation program University Hospital St. John Dieu, Barcelona. Chair of the Respiratory Section of the Hispanic. Uh, our international speaker will, uh, will give us lecture about the adult algorithm for oxygen therapy and ventilation in COVID pandemic. Welcome, Dr. Marci. Thanks for the introduction, Dr. Fauda. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a pleasure again to share with you. And a, a little bit concerned because the, the, the previous speakers had uh, talked very deeply and very exhaustively about their, uh, the issues they were presenting. And my lecture is going to be a, a, a hopefully a short one and, and, and with, a, with a, uh, a few messages uh, uh, and related to, to respiratory support and probably not adding a, a lot to the knowledge of the, of the attendees, but hopefully something interesting you can find in, in it. So, uh, so how does it affect? So we know that the, uh, the patients with, uh, with SARS-CoV-2, they have cough, they are generating droplets and they have respiratory insufficiency. So it's easy for us working in intensive care to manage respiratory distress, especially out of the PQ for mild distress. Most of patients just with oxygen may be enough. The problem is that with uh, COVID-19, uh, many uh, patients, elder patients are uh, having severe pneumonia uh, with moderate uh, severe respiratory distress. And, and, and we know for our previous experience that a huge number of these patients may benefit from a CPAP device plus oxygen. So you can see at the bottom on the left that usually we, we are, in many places, we are escalating the respiratory support this way, going for low flow oxygen to sometimes high flow nasal cannula and moving forward to non-invasive ventilation, CPAP and bilevel. And at the end, we are using the invasive mechanical ventilation. All of you are aware what is CPAP, so no, no, no reason for, but, but okay, just remember that in adults, they are mainly using in patients, obese patients with obstructive sleep apnea. But now we are talking about hypoxemic respiratory failure. So it means that if we are using a home device with uh, as a CPAP, we need to add oxygen. That's really important. Which was the problem? Some important healthcare. Um, societies or uh, 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 and a scientific consensus recommended a uh, very restrictive treatments like high flow oxygen or CPAP during the COVID outbreak. Because of course they were concerned about the dropless, uh, the exhaled air dispersion. And that's true, we cannot, we cannot deny this, but if, it can, we can prevent patients deterioration using the bad. Why are experts so afraid of doublets, uh, about droplets? Okay, because there is increased risk if you have no protection at all. So the main message is that from the emergency room door to the PQ and in intubated patients, all the healthcare staff should be protected 
if you are dealing or facing a COVID patient. That's it. And you should be a, a little bit more concerned if you are doing some procedure like suctioning the, the tracheal secretions or nebulizing or using CPAP, then you should be more cautious with your protection. I think it's the main message. So what happens? So because of these recommendations, high flow wasn't used, NIV wasn't used. So people in a patient that most of them were highly rapidly deteriorating and they really need very rapidly mechanical ventilations, but others just deteriorated because we weren't providing the appropriate treatment in the proper moment. So you know that the EQ beds in Europe per 1000 inhabitants is very variable. So very different in Germany than in Italy, than in Spain or Portugal. So you can clear the, 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 the green color is clear, less beds you have for uh, 1, 000, uh, 100,000 inhabitants. So we rapidly rise in Italy and in Spain, even though we increase the number of beds by threefold, where's an eco collapse? Because we weren't doing an appropriate management of the respiratory failure. Doctors in Italy use massively CPAP with interfaces to reduce uh, droplets. So in the second week of March, the use of CPAPs in the general wards in Italy was 1,000 patients. They are used to use the helmet, and this is the best interface to protect the healthcare workers because the droplets are not going outside the helmet. So you cannot forbid the NIV. You should say that some kinds or types of NIV are not as safe as other types of NIV. So helmet is a good option. And just one week later, they were using 3,000 devices, whatever devices. You can see here a snorkel mask that the Italian doctors adapted with a pip bulb to give CPAP to their patients. Well, it happened at the, at, at the end. At the end, we have uh, numbers published, and you can see here on the top of, of the of the of the slide, so that 10,000 patients were admitted in Italy, 4,000 in intensive care, and 6,000 have been ventilated non-invasively in the general wars. So then imagine that we are in two different countries, Italy, and we are using the Italian algorithm. And in the other, we are using the algorithm that many scientific societies have recommended strongly. The, uh, the, the World Health uh, Organization has also recommended. So Italian algorithm, you are using high flow or using CPAP because if not patients are dying because you don't have enough eco beds. So we know the efficacy from this paper of the high flow nasal cannula was 20%. It means that providing accepting that is a slight increase of the risk of the infection of the health care staff without protection, then it means that 2,000 patients stayed in the general ward. It means that you have 8,000 patients. We know that uh, the efficacy of CPAP was around from, depending on the paper, from 50% to 70%. It means that, again, you have 4,000 patients that remain in the general ward. So you have the number, 6,000 patients in Italy remained in the general ward. So, and 4,000 were intubated. Remember that we recommend a CPAP trial of just one to two hours. If it's not working, it's strongly recommend move forward to intubation and mechanical ventilation. Let's see what can happen with a restrictive algorithm recommended for the by the experts in the world. So then you are using, for example, reservoir mask that has an efficacy published in several papers of 40%. It means that you can keep 
4,000 patients in the general world, that's great, but you have to have 6,000 beds of intensive care. It means you have to increase, you have, have threefold number of bed, PICU beds in the hospital. You have to increase even more to get and to avoid 2,000 people dying at, at the door of the, of, the, of the intensive care unit. So we have papers saying that, okay, helmet with a good seal really prevents nosocomial infection during the use of NIV. And on the right, you can see this paper recently published by Stefano Nava, a very well-known doctor publishing an, uh, in, the, in the respiratory field that looking at CPAP via oral nasal mask with a CPAP of 20, not currently used, or using a helmet with two levels of pressure, the dispersion of droplets is negligible. So it means we should not blame the NIV. We should blame the NIV made with nasal cannula. We should blame the high flow nasal cannula, but we cannot blame the proper way to do NIV with uh, antiviral, viral, uh, uh, antiviral filters and et cetera, et cetera. And always, whatever the way you are doing, the personnel should wear the appropriate material to protect themselves, PPE. Okay. So at the end, which was the early consensus management for non-EQ patients in Italy start with a CPAP 10 to 12 centimeters of water, preferably with a helmet, with a mask of uh, or a nasal mask as a second uh, choice. A face mask also would be great. If you don't have sufficient number of eco beds, you can uh, generate some special uh, places in the emergency room, medical wards, etc. And if you don't have negative pressure rooms, that is a, like an ideal, uh, it's only in all the papers, but most of the hospitals in the world, nobody has negative pressure rooms. In my hospital, we have only five, four in the transplant, in blood, blood marrow of transplant, and one in the PQ. So it means it's like a, it's an ideal world that do not exist. We should protect ourselves and do, if it's possible, in individual boxes, individual rooms, but if not, in a big rooms with a, a lot of ventilation that you can change the air very rapidly during, uh, during, the, during the day. So, and uh, again, repeating that you should protect the, the personnel with the proper uh, 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 standard material. At the end, we are not. We are saying we, and we know that the gold standard is for severe hypoxemic patients with respiratory failure. Is go to the intensive care unit. But if you don't have enough beds, that is, it happened in China. It happens in Italy. It happened in Spain. It's happening in United States. It's happening in South America. Please build up intermediate care units, general wars with uh, and train your people to do non-invasive ventilation out of the intensive care. Because most of these patients really respond very, very well because they have, uh, they don't have an H uh, phenotype, they have a, a L phenotype as Dr. Gattinoni. So, okay, so if we, follow the recommendations of the scientific societies, okay, we can say our intensive care unit is fully booked, sorry, you are going to die. On the other side, we are not asking you to be kamikazes. So I'm not saying you should do NIV, whatever the way, without taking care. I am saying, please try to build up helmets, try to use facial masks to protect yourself. You can also use a very simple mask, like this is a snorkel device, uh, sell by a, a famous company of uh, sports, Decalon in, in, 
in, in France, in Spain, etc. So you have oxygen and interface and you have a pit valve, you have a CPAP. If you have enough flow, you can provide a good, uh, a good, a good seal, then you are providing a good CPAP, a very simple one. But we in Spain, we run out of pit valves. And unfortunately, most of the countries, European countries close their borders and they do not allow the companies to sell medical devices or medical material. So most of the countries like our country that is not, that has no industry for medical devices, we had a, a terrible problem. We have no simple connectors. We have no mask for oxygenation. We have no pip valves. We have no masks for uh, giving CPAP. So it was really a terrible situation. So, and many, many engineers, doctors, et cetera, trying to build up uh, homemade devices like the, the Hoyas. In our hospitals, we develop a, a PIP valve that has been validated and accepted by the Canadian government to be used during the, during the COVID outbreak. It also has been validated by, by the Spanish agency to be used during the COVID outbreak. Fortunately, nowadays, there, is, there are no, uh, no, no, no patients uh, and we have enough ventilators, enough CPAPs to provide care so there is no need to use it, but it's, it's, it can be used. So we call it ECCPAP. And as I told you, it's can, it, it has been validated. Now we are working to, to donate some of these devices to Peru in South America and some countries in Africa. If, if they accept the, the, the criteria and they, and they confirm the, the safety of the device to be, to, 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 to be used in, in, in human beings. During the outbreak, many engineers developed uh, devices based on bamboo back. Uh, you can see here two examples, but because we ran out of pip valves, they couldn't work. So it's a pity, but okay, building up a new device is not an easy business. So it, it took time, but uh, at the end, what happens, what happened is really that we lack of the, the pip valves and then the bamboo back that can be automatized but it's not working properly without uh, a pip valve, especially in hypoxemic patients. So these are some of the initiatives that happen in Spain. And you should know that some of them really are not the ventilators. This is an EURS. What is an EURS? It's an emergency use resuscitation system. So as you can see in the, you can see an embu back. So this can uh, give uh, pressure control, but you don't have a, a very good monitoring. So it's a very, very simple device that can stabilize a, a sick patient, but you cannot win the patient with this kind of ears because they have no trigger and they are difficult to manage. Uh, there is also a by level that it has been published in the Euro European uh, journal, Respiratory Journal uh, and, and several other devices to provide respiratory support. So to make it clear, there are different types of ventilators in out of the intensive care. And I just, I'm going to use some compar compar comparisons uh, explained through the cars. So in the intensive care unit, this is formula one. So, okay, we, 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 need, we, are, we are needing very complex and sophisticated devices, but we need a good drivers and we need the whole team involved. So we need engineers, we need uh, people that repair, people that are, are taking care of the ventilators, etc. So it's not easy to provide a high level of quality of mechanical ventilation out of the intensive care. Out of the peak is another world. So it could be in Farrell's rally. And you can, you can have a, a very good uh, car, but you still need uh, uh, some support. And you can see that in, this, uh, in these rallies, uh, people at uh, the teams are wearing uh, a, a track full of uh, uh, pairs uh, uh, of pieces to repair with, uh, with uh, engineers, etc. So uh, it means that, for example, in the emergency ward, in the, uh, in the during the transport, it could be this. And at the end, but out the farms really, it's 
a totally complete another world. So if you are working with your own Land Rover and you are working for a, a, a facility to help you to repair the Land Rover, the, probably the Land Rover can be easily repaired. So an EURS can be easily repaired in a place in a, in a low income country, uh, but you should have uh, at least some personal capable to repair it. So to finish the comparison, so, okay, we can do mechanical ventilation for very severe patients in the intensive care, but we cannot expect to have the same results using transfer ventilators out of the intensive care, but we can have very good results. But obviously, if at the end of the day, we are out of the, these environments and we are very alone and using devices that has, have, have not been uh, really uh, totally uh, um, uh, being working and, and review it, et cetera, et cetera. So you can save some lives, but it's not, uh, you, you cannot expect to have the same results. So nowadays, our hospital together with the University of Barcelona and a cluster of, uh, of industry, we are working with these three devices, the ECPAP that we developed on the left, the bilevel developed by the University of Barcelona Hospital Clinic, and the EURS developed by uh, Secartis, this group of engineers and industry, uh, just to uh, help other countries. And so we are, we are planning just is to build up some of these ventilators and devices and two donations uh, in order to uh, conduct clinical studies in human beings suffering COVID-19 in order to help to save lives in those places that they are running out of ventilators bi-level ventilators or simple CPAPs. Thank you very much for your interest and I'm open to uh, questions at the end of the of the lectures. Sure. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Dr. Marti, for this highly informative and updated lecture, actually, about the uh, uh, using uh, uh, oxygen and the ventilation during uh, COVID-19 pandemic. And we are expecting questions at the 